hey everyone welcome back to the channel so in this video what we are going to do is turning our mouse cursor into a digital pen using 3js what you see here is an empty canvas i've set the background color or the renderer color to um white and so as i click and drag you can see that uh, i will be like i can write stuff i can draw stuff whatever you want to do and we're going to use javascript and 3js for this we also have the option to change the color of our digital pen i say that in code and code you can change it and then you also can change the thickness of the like this thickness over here so now it's thicker you can go down so how, how it works you click and then start dragging as you let go it just stops and then you can click again and start dragging and all that and also we'll add a button here as you can see to clear the whole thing so you can start over it's like an empty canvas you can do whatever you want here all right i'm very excited about this video i hope you guys are also excited and so without further ado let's get started okay so this is our starter code this is something that we've worked with previously i have my webpack boilerplate here and then everything 3js related is happening under this index.js file under app canvas and 3js and uh, i have that open right now here you can see it have my canvas set up it's referring to like this element in my a uh, pog file or like if you have html whatever your canvas uh, element and then uh, i have my scene my camera field of view for these uh, two uh, for the field of view and uh, position z of the camera i have set them in the in these two variables because we're gonna be playing with these two so it's easier if i have variables for them and uh, so i have my perspective camera here and my render also here and i'm setting the color to all white because that's like our canvas and you can change this color whatever you want to but this is basically how you do it with your uh, render and then i have my other functions update is basically taking care of the uh, request animation frame uh, for uh, every frame that we have uh, and these are basically functions that are coming from my index.js my um, entry point for uh, all the javascript files uh, and like functions everything so uh, that's there right directly under the app folder and so uh, but uh, again everything we're gonna do mainly we're gonna be and doing it inside this index.js uh, under 3js over here so if i do npm install to install all the packages and then npm start to run our server inside our localhost 3000 slash 3js this is all you see right now it's a uh, like i said a white canvas and then nothing else 3js related and uh, so we're gonna start working on this file over here and uh, add code to this file to uh, get what we need to now what we are going to do is uh, turn our mouse cursor here into a like a digital pen and when I click on this canvas and start dragging, it basically drops some geometries or whatever that we want to have as a geometry. And then kind of like, as long as I'm dragging, it's just gonna keep dropping them. And then once I let go, it's like uh, we've stopped drawing or like writing something. And that's how the process is. Uh, like I said, I'm going to use circle geometry for this uh, you could probably 
do the same or similar thing with plane geometry, but uh, I did some tests. It seems like circle geometry is good. Again, uh, plane should also work well. You can try other geometries and see maybe like uh, you actually like some more than the other, but uh, it's up to you. And then, as I said before, the color of the canvas right now, I'm setting it as white. That's also up to you. You can have it dark, all up to you. Back in the code, I'm going to add a function which takes care of adding the geometry to our canvas. And right now, for now, I'm going to add it here in my constructor. So the geometry will be added to the scene uh, as soon as the page is loaded. So let's do that. I'm going to define add objects, add object function over here. And then, well, I call it over here. And then here I'm going to define it. I need to add this. And then here I'm going to define it. So I have my object, uh, add object function here and all we need to do is to add a, a circle geometry and uh, what we had over here uh, it shows you how you can add that it's nothing special we've done it multiple times before I have my uh, radius as one and then my segments 15 segments and then for the color I'm choosing like this cyan color and uh, all I'm doing next is just adding them inside my mesh and then adding the object, my final mesh, into the scene. So let's save this and go back to localhost 3000 over here, 3JS endpoint. And we see this one right here. It's like in the middle of the uh, screen, which is our 00. zero and uh, we can actually go ahead and add uh, access helper. I already have it commented out here, so I will add it back in. Uh, what I had, remember, my camera Z as, is at 50, so like 50 units towards myself outside the screen because that's the Z uh, axis, and then uh, uh, the X and Y is zero, so let's save this access helper i added it inside my constructor and now we're gonna see like all the axes here uh, i have a red one which is x this is green and the blue which is z is like coming back right towards the camera so you don't see it it's just right coming towards me outside the screen so you don't see it there but it's there Anyways, so now we have this add object here. The next thing is that, well, we want, we don't want to have anything here when we load the screen. We want to add stuff as like I click and drag. I want to add multiple of these, kind of like forming what I'm drawing here. And then once I let go of the mouse, then like it's gonna stop drawing and then again if I click again it's gonna start over so what we want to do seems like something that would be for example on mouse down here let's try that let's say on mouse down I would like to add the object so I'm gonna move the add object from my constructor because I don't want it to be added at the beginning. I'm adding it in my mouse down event, which if we again go back to our index.js right under app, our entry point for all these functions, the mouse down event is basically the, uh, on mouse down over here is the mouse down and touch start events that we are listening to. So it's taking care of like a touch and also uh, click event there so we have it here let's go back and once I click here I expect to add an object and I just clicked I added there 
Now if I click again, it's adding multiple objects, but it's going to be all at the same location. So it seems like I have only one object there, but at least we are adding something on click right now. Next step is to get the mouse location, you know, like where the, this cursor is on our canvas and make sure every time we click, the object is actually being created on that same exact spot. And to do that, we are going to need to add a um, vector two, and uh, we just call this our mouse. So over here, right in my constructor, inside my constructor here, I have this dot mouse, and then this is my vector two. This is exactly what we did for ray casting, so nothing really special. If you want to know more, go check that video out. But we need to also add to our uh, mouse down here is the event because we're gonna get the uh, X and Y position of the mouse right here using the event the client x and y and this formula that we've used a lot again i put a link up top right here it's gonna uh, basically let us grab the exact location of the mouse cursor in our canvas and we can uh, print it out it's gonna be a number between negative uh, one to one for both x and y so let's do console dot log for my this dot mouse and uh, this will show x and y so let's save it and then if we go to our local host 3000 if i click right up top here you see i have like negative one x and almost one y up here we expect to have one and one that's what we're getting one and one and over here i have negative one and negative one and then here i'll have like x one and y negative one and if i click in the middle right here we know that's zero and zero and that's what we're getting here so like i didn't like click exactly there but it's like as close as i guess i can get uh, so that's the uh, exact position of the uh, cursor in our scene. And then the next thing we want to do, we want to be able to actually pass like an X and Y to this object over here. So let me put it down here to the function and then grab that X and Y and then use that x and y instead uh, uh, well basically use that x and y to assign the position of the object that we add so you know if, if you remember we have uh, the position property so we can do this dot object oops object dot position and then i can do dot set i will have x and y and for z we're gonna have zero because this is like a 2d kind of canvas for us everything will be on the uh, x y with z of zero uh, plane if you will so that's just like 2d for us with what we're doing here and uh, so we need to pass send these x and y through our function so i need to receive them here and then send x and y over here so are we going to send the this mouse dot x and this mouse dot y let's try let's do this the mouse dot x and then this dot mouse oops dot mouse dot y okay so if i send this over so let me save it 
you might already know that that's not gonna work because if you actually look at this access helper my number is 50 so I already have 50 units here and uh, the number that I was getting from the mouse X and mouse Y was between negative 1 and 1 this is kind of like at least negative 50 to positive 50 over here at least I'm saying at least because there is more room here and so if I click over here it is slightly like to this side and that's because what I'm getting from X and Y are like small like negative 0.5 and 0.5 so even if I click up top here the most it's gonna go is like negative 1 and 1 which in this scale which we have like 50 here that's not gonna really work it's not gonna um, add this object where I'm clicking so that goes back to the whole uh, discussion about like the perspective camera and how we can get the actual click position in my canvas using the units that we have here I hope like it makes sense to you guys what I'm uh, talking about let me explain a little bit more in this whiteboard here so let's say this is my camera over here and I am looking at my scene the field of view that we have here let's say 75 degrees that means I can see only like whatever is 75 degrees between my near and the far which in my case are 0 0.1 and 1000 okay so we know that now if I want to know hey what is this value because that's what I'm looking for if you uh, like look here this value right here is what I'm looking for like like my mouse cursor is right here I want to know in terms of this uh, canvas units what is the value of the X and Y of where my mouse cursor is to get that we can use uh, this formula over here let's say this is my X and then Y is actually like coming out of the screen in this that I have here in this drawing because this is gonna be actually my uh, plane my surface this red line that you see I'm looking from like top so if you look from where the camera is which is kind of like coming out of this here this is where like my camera is and looking at this whole thing okay so this surface over here this green line is what I have here this green line imagine looking from this angle if you would be looking from this angle this is what you would see just a line for this whole surface and then this which is half of this and uh, the green line which is half of the red line is what uh, we have here so exactly like I have the same color so you could see and so if we want to know what this number is all we need to do is to do some math stuff here so we know this whole thing is filled up view this is gonna be our filled up view divided by two and this is where our camera is located like the Z because again this is where my camera is and if this is your screen it's the Z of the XYZ axis that we had for our scene over here so we can do the tangent tangent of FOV over 2 and then if multiplied by the Z value that's what we get here so from this which is our 0 0 point to one side it's gonna be this formula over here this one over here okay so 
that was a little bit of math there to explain how we get get that number now we have values over here for our fov field of view and the z of camera that's why i set them as variables here so you can play like if you change this over here it will affect everything in your code so right here on mouse down here what i am going to do is to actually define a position x and a position y const position y to get the position x exactly what we did there was we got the we can get the mouse x value and then multiply it by the camera z value and then eventually we want to multiply it by that tangent tangent thing that we talked about and that's gonna be coming from this formula right here so in here what i'm doing is that my fov needs to be in radians okay like fill the view what we have here is in degrees so i'm going to convert that to radians which is right here okay i'm converting that to radians and then i'm getting the tangent so that's this part and then i will be multiplying it by the camera z which is this part and that will give me the uh, whole this whole area now if i want to know where my mouse is be is clicking then i need to multiply that by the position of my mouse because remember this is a negative one to one value so uh, this whole thing is gonna be like a uh, a constant number because everything is constant i know i put these in variables but for one scene that we have this is always going to be like 75 degrees and that so that means my this fov half radians the tangent is always going to be the same and then the z point the z uh, position of the camera is also going to be always the same so this is a value that's going to give us the whole, like all this distance from our center to the right of the screen. That's what we think at this point. And then if I multiply that by the mouse X, hopefully that will give me the position X. And we can do the same for position Y except that i will have y here and the rest will remain the same okay and now i need to do position x and position y over here now this if i save there was like a lot of math stuff here but believe me this is like how you want to do it maybe you go back and do the whole thing i explained here for yourself and then look at your scene over here and see how you can get there so if i click here you'll see like hey we are getting closer to where i'm clicking but it's not really working and it seems like my y value is actually correct but the X is not as I'm getting further and further from the middle the X is actually seems to be not right same over here to the right but the Y value seems like it's working fine okay and the problem with that is the aspect ratio so what you want to do here you want to multiply this by the aspect ratio of your screen 
or camera which is like the width of the screen divided by the height of the screen so right here and that is also saved in the aspect the cameras aspect property so you can get it that way as well if i save it right now and go back you will see that now in the center obviously it works as we go up in the y-axis it works now if i go towards the x-axis also i'm getting the click the object added to the exact location that i'm clicking right so and you can see over here like these numbers so you expect here to be because my axis helper had 50 units so if i click here it, the x should be 50 and y like around zero uh, well i'm not actually um console.logging those values i can do position x and position y here so we can see that I was still console logging the mouse X and Y. Let's do that again over here. Here, if I click, I get like about 50 and zero over here. This is probably like closer to 50 and negative like 50. And then up here, like 50 and uh, 40. So this like probably this is not going all the way. So that's fine let's see okay so we have this now taken care of but what we need to do we need to like click and then hold and as we drag it needs to keep adding these um circles and then like when we let go it will stop adding the circles so let's take care of that now as you've probably guessed uh, this is going to be taken care of inside the uh, mouse move here which if we again go back to our entry point over here mouse move is the event for uh, mouse move so that's uh, what we need to do here so what I'm gonna do I'm going to actually uh, cut everything from here and then move it to here don't need this console.log so now as i move in the screen we're gonna be adding circles so without clicking even so i'm not clicking or anything i'm just like moving the cursor so you see this is adding so we are so cl close to what we want to eventually have and uh, if you see like if you move real fast it might miss some points and uh, I think there might be some ways around that but I don't know myself so uh, if you want to have like a continuous line uh, or whatever you're doing to be continuous you need to like move slow slowly not too slow I mean I'm moving pretty fast right now but not like this so anyways how we will take care of this is actually simple what i'm gonna do i'm gonna define a new variable we're gonna call it this dot is held well the value is gonna be is held so this dot is held probably should move this also over here and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set this to true inside my mouse down actually so here inside the mouse down and then a mouse up i will set this to false and mouse down and mouse up as you can tell like is click and let go of the click and all i need to do is if this is held is equal to true i want to keep um adding my object so this is held and then if not i don't want to do anything so here 
let's save this and go back to here so now when we click the value is going to be true when we let go off is going to turn false and so this is going to only happen while we click and drag so right now i'm moving around nothing happens because we are not clicking so this is uh, false when i click here it adds and as i drag i have it i let go now nothing click drag let go nothing click drag and that's what we wanted right i do my uh whatever uh drawing or anything i wanted like you can write type like write something hi and like things like that so this is now what uh, we wanted and it's working fine you can get rid of this access helper here uh, so we don't need that uh, this is the main part of this uh, but we still have a couple of things uh, that we need to take care of remember like now we can handle the uh, typing or writing or drawing whatever it is but we want to also give an option for the user to hey remove this whatever you have here clear the screen because i want to start over for example we already actually have a destroy function here which uh, is uh, called when we are switching between pages so if i for example go back to my uh, home page which like here you can't really go back to home page but if you were um, navigating away from this page that function the destroy function would be called to destroy all the 3d stuff that you have here because you don't want to keep them those are not good for performance the reason is that this is kind of like a single page application if you haven't followed the videos uh, go back and check out uh, the video where i explain everything this is not like a react or angular this is single page application using pure javascript so uh, as you can see so if i go like to home page here and uh, if i like click to this go to 3js this is not gonna like refresh or anything this is single page so i'm having like a transition here and then i'm going to this 3 3js so if i had a go back to home button here i would want to get rid of all these 3js stuff here and that's what the destroy function does you can go check back uh, the video where i explain all these things what we need to do is to add a button and then call this destroy function and that will clear the page for us so i'm gonna go over here and i'm just going to add a simple clear button here i have our this is my by the way the 3js.pug uh, file uh, your html file whatever you have for this page which has this like up here uh, text visit the late night coders club which by the way you should take, definitely do join the community there and uh, then we have this clear page uh, uh, class over here and i'm saying like clear it's a button it's already styled uh, if you go under style pages 3js 3js scss file i have already styling everything in there so i should have saved this one actually and then refresh so yeah i've added this clear button right now doesn't do anything uh make sure to go check this community out and so what we want to have here is uh, when i i'm done drawing writing whatever i'm doing i click on this clear and get rid of everything so what i'm gonna do actually inside my constructor here i'm going to define a new function let's call it handle clear and then down here i will just target the element that i just added the uh, button here under my 3js class so that's how you target it using like javascript query selector here 
we're gonna add an event listener click to it and as I said all we need to do is to call this destroy function let's save that and then go over here 3.js and now we start drawing things and I hit clear and it's all gone exactly what we want to do okay so that part is also taken care of the next thing we want to do we want to give the user ability to change like the color or even the thickness of these uh, uh, like this digital pen or whatever it is which in our case is going to be really the radius of the circles that we are adding as we drag the cursor over here we're going to use the uh, lil gui or uh, it used to be i guess uh, uh, debug gui or something uh, but this is the uh, gui that i have also a video about this go check that one out also if you want to know more um what it will give us is kind of like a menu up here where we can add the color or uh, and also a lot of other things including the thickness or the radius of these uh, circles uh, there and uh, like the user can change them so for that uh, I'm going to initiate initialize it there we go initialize it uh, so I'm having a new GUI here and then I would say one thing we want to do is to put uh, our variables that we want to change inside an object because that will be easier especially for color over here would be much easier to uh, control it with the GUI so what I'm going to do actually is to define a, um, an object here we'll call it uh, parameters whatever you want to call it just because these are our um, functions, the parameters for these functions, I'm calling it parameters. For the color, that's exactly what color we have here. So I'm going to replace this with, if I can paste this parameters a color, and then this one is going to be this dot parameters dot thickness okay and by thickness uh, like i said in our case is the radius of this circle and then we can easily add these two to our gui that's just like this we can add color using the add color function for it and then we can add the thickness using just the add and then we're going to give it minimum and maximum and the step through and let's call it thickness again if you don't know what how what this is what the hell this is just go check out the video that i have in the channel and and i'm going to uh, explain it again over here so i've saved this file i expect to see the gui up here and i do see it here so i can start drawing stuff whatever i want if I click on this, it's gonna give me the color picker. So I can go change it to red. Now everything is in red. Any color you want to. So even like as you're doing stuff, you can like change the color here. I'm gonna clear it, it still works fine. The thickness was the radius of our circle. And again, from 0.1 to 3 as you can see and with 0.1 step so I'm going 1.7 1.8 can't have anything in between so that's the step that we had so again if you don't like these steps or min maxes play with it obviously negative might throw an error we will get it give it a try and see how this works but 
what I'm trying to show here is that right now like we have 0.3 so these are small let's do it like 2.2 well as expected and as uh, this uh, thickness grows you'll see that these are like more continuous as opposed to small ones because uh, it like it works better on like dragon and uh, again you can change the thickness and color using these uh, GUI controls over here all right so that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, this was really fun for me trying to figure things out and uh, finally putting things together and present it to you uh, hopefully you also figured out the math and uh, all the things that i talked about here and uh, this is not really difficult if you want to make it easier for yourself you can change this fov to 90 and then you can actually get rid of this whole thing over here that makes it easier because with 90 you'll get 45 degrees over here and that means this distance is equal to this distance so this x is always gonna be equal to your camera z value so potentially like delete these and hopefully it still works you wouldn't need this one either it should still work because we have 90 over here but i was trying to give you a more general formula so it still works it's following perfectly uh, with 90 degrees you don't need to worry about like all these calculations but still that same thing applies except that tangent of uh, uh, FOV over 2 which is 45 degrees is going to be 1 and then multiply by Z is going to be Z so Z and Z here but again I'm going to set it back to the general way that we did it so you could change this fov depending on your use case over here and then everything will be taken care of over here i'm going to save it i will uh, share the code with you also in the description box below the video so go check that out and again please don't forget to check our late night coders club community and uh, check different uh, pages here hopefully you find something that uh, you like other than that uh, if you are new to the channel please make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, like this video and uh, if you have any questions suggestions you can either uh, post them below this video in the comment box or you can go to the community and i always am there and checking everything so that's about it thanks again and i'll see you guys soon mm -hmm.